thank God I chose to bring my gear. Because this is Cornwall. You encounter something that's going to distract you because it's just that beautiful. about today's episode. I just finished up work. I used to work from home. That's why I was able to live in Cornwall. I needed to make a grocery run. And I normally do that in town. Just take a two minute walk across the river to the co-op and we good. But when I need a few more things, I head out to St. Austell, which is like a 20 minute drive away from Lost Worthyville. And on this particular day, I remember getting to the car and I had forgotten my camera, which I thought wasn't an issue given the weather was typically English but something told me you know what don't ever leave without your camera so I went back up got it and as you'll see if you stick around I guess for the episode then I will turn out to be very glad that I did that so if not anything else that alone is a takeaway from today's uh, episode take your camera with you uh, that's if you're a photographer, of course. You just never know what you're going to stumble upon. So, yeah, I headed out to St. Austell and it was still raining. So I did my shopping within 10 to 15 minutes. And by the time I got back to the car, things were starting to clear up. And so I became a little giddy uh, seeing that happening. And I thought, okay, it might actually be worth making the detour to Charlestown, which I usually make. Uh, as I got to Charlestown, I was struggling to find parking and that was both a good and bad thing. It meant something was happening. That was the good part. And so I was like, okay, so the weather's clearing and there's something going on here. So I grabbed my camera, made my way down to the town's main avenue and lo and behold, an entire carnival was uh, taking place. So I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be good. And it was. I'm going to now leave you right in it. I hope it is worth your time. And if it is, I guess I'll see you on the other end. And if not, well, I wish you all the best anyway. Ciao. Places often leave a far deeper mark on us than we leave on them. And while the photos I'll make here today capture some of the mark this place has left on me, they don't fully convey the sentimental value this unlikely maritime village holds for me. So while you join me on today's incredibly picturesque photo walk, I thought I'd fill you in on the things these photos won't say on their own. There's a quote that says, Sometimes you find yourself in the middle of nowhere, and sometimes in the middle of nowhere you find yourself. And this seemingly forgotten edge of the world did just that for me. A region where the wild, untamed coastlines seem to whisper to those who dare to listen. Charlestown always brings to mind Paul Dark the historical drama set in 18th century Cornwall that first sparked my interest in this place. I watched it on Netflix during our first year in the UK while living in a little studio apartment in London. Scenes from the show following Captain Ross Baldock's return to Cornwall after the American War of Independence were filmed along these very cobbled streets and weathered ships. Each time I walk through Charlestown, I'm reminded of the daring decision it inspired. There's a fair bit of irony in a TV show being my guide to a place that would go on to become that middle of nowhere where I would find myself. You see, 
I grew up in a religious community where watching TV was painted as something dangerous, a subtle evil that could lead you astray. Such blanket prohibitions are well intentioned and well placed in the absence of discretion. But as the Bhagavad Gita verse reminds us, he who is temperate in his habits of eating, sleeping, working and recreation can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. This verse underscores that it's not about total abstinence, but rather about moderation. While these rules may make sense during formative years, as I grew older and my passion for visual storytelling deepened, it was only a matter of time before I would outgrow them. And so, watching TV, something I wasn't supposed to do, has always been a signpost to my true calling. As a child, I would immerse myself in cartoons for hours on end and always told myself, that's it, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into animation. What was once seen as a distraction wasn't just a momentary escape. It was the very thing that set the foundation for my passion in visual storytelling and ultimately what led me here to Cornwall. Life, as they say, is not always black and white. It's a million shades of grey, especially when you're pursuing that murky path that is uniquely your own. This reminds me of a story from my guru's life. There was once a man with an addiction to tobacco, and in an attempt to force this addiction out of him, he was locked in a room by a person who conjured up this move as being the best approach. My guru, who was a monk, did something unexpected by giving the man with the addiction the very thing he was enslaved by, tobacco. To the addicted man's regret, however, this came at a price. Not to him, but to the monk he witnessed getting beaten up for offering him momentary respite. Being moved by this act of kindness, the man gave up his addiction once and for all. Doing what's right rarely fits neatly within the rules, and stepping outside them often means standing alone. In those moments, judgment will come from those who hold tightly to convention, claiming moral superiority for your so-called transgressions. But it's precisely in these moments that real change begins. It takes courage to follow your own path, so trust that inner voice, even when it sets you apart. Cornwall was to be that transformation for me. You see, my wife and I had already taken a leap of faith when we moved from South Africa to the UK a year earlier. London was a ball. It was easy. We had pretty much everything we could want. It was that place that made us feel like this move should have happened much sooner. But this was different. This time, I was going it alone. My wife would be leaving to prepare for the next phase of our lives and I would remain here on the cusp of something both thrilling and terrifying. Moving to a place where I knew no one, where I was one of the rare few with my skin color, where I had no friends or family for the first time in my life, and where practicing my faith meant doing it in solitude, it was daunting to say the least. I was stepping far outside the lines of comfort, confronting the fears of isolation and solitude head on. Yet, Cornwall, with its windswept cliffs and endless sea, reaffirmed the childhood dreams I always had, and the inner voice that led me here. This was what I was meant to do, pursue my purpose in life through my passion for the outdoors, for visual storytelling, through photography, cinematography, and filmmaking. Something about this place inspired that here I would find my faith again, after feeling like I had drifted from it in recent years. As the years pass and a few more greys settle in, you begin to see that life, much like any art, starts with imitation. For years you follow the rules, staying within the lines, but eventually the urge to break free grows stronger. The dissatisfaction of playing it safe, of colouring neatly inside the lines, starts to gnaw at you, pushing you to create something uniquely your own. In these moments, resist the pull of the grave where so many already lie, living yet lifeless. Their days are spent in mediocrity, bound by fear of rejection and ridicule, never daring to break free. Yet, 
When you act on that inner voice, the path ahead shifts. While they fade before their time, you stay vividly alive, even long after you're gone. Your life, shaped by purpose, will leave its mark on others. And in that, you'll find not just a lasting legacy, but the quiet fulfillment of a life deeply lived. Free from the haunting whispers of, I should have. for the night it's been glorious but I think it's time to go home thank god I chose to just bring my gear because this is Cornwall you just encounter something that's going to distract you because it's just that beautiful as you can see like, just look at this this is mesmeric Bloody hell. It's so, so beautiful.